nitty-gritty of it. Um, there's so many medications that are freely dispensed by providers and freely taken by patients. Everyone thinks, oh yeah, it's just Motrin, you know, it's just, you know, a little bit of Mylanta, you know, like I just taking a little bit, you know, just help me with a little bit with this, a little bit with that. And they're taking a long term. And they think that because the doctor gave it to me and um, it, everyone else is taking it. So they thought it must be okay. So I kind of mm-hmm. want to go over this, you know, what might people be mistreating, mistreating their own body by doing that? Like, what have they missed and what kind of harm are they causing themselves? Well, just the first two drugs that you mentioned, oh, it's just ibuprofen. You mean that commonly used over-the-counter kidney toxin? (laughs) Oh, it's just Mylanta? You mean that that medication that's increasing your risk of infections and dysbiosis and mineral deficiencies? We have to take a clear look at drugs because just remember this. One of my professors taught me this when I was in pharmacy school. You show me a drug that doesn't have a side effect and I'll show you a drug that doesn't work. Hmm. All drugs have side effects because they work on the body in a very targeted manner. They work on the body in a very targeted manner. And so, you know, you think about, you think about your, your NSAID medications, right? Those work on your prostaglandin systems. They work on your COX enzymes. And we know from history of Vioxx and Bextra and many of the selective COX-2 inhibitors of days gone by, you think, oh, well, let's just eliminate COX-2 so that we eliminate the production of pro-inflammatory mediators that are causing pain. Well, nobody stopped to look the other direction and go like, but wait, then there's unmitigated COX-1 that's probably going to be more likely to cause cardiovascular disease. So we can't piecemeal the body in this way. So let me give you just a couple of really down to earth examples. Cause I, I want people to walk away today feeling like they've gotten something that they can put into action. Let's talk about some of the most common medications out there. Um, and, and some of the nutrient depletions that they cause probably the biggest soapbox that I can get on is the cholesterol lowering medicines known as statins. Mm -hmm. So cholesterol medicines known as statins, they are so well known to deplete CoQ10, which listeners, if you don't know what CoQ10 is, CoQ10 is absolutely critical to your metabolic health, your anti-aging health, your, your very mitochondrial function is dependent on the cleanup mechanism that is CoQ10. Statins deplete CoQ10 so well known, well documented that in Japan, it is mandated by law that every prescription that goes out of the pharmacy, the pharmacist must also send them home with CoQ10. The problem with CoQ10 and the problem with statins is that one of the most known, well-known side effects of statins is muscle weakness, muscle pain, and ultimately the most severe side effect is called rhabdomyolysis, where your urine turns brown, and that is because the very myoglobin of your muscles is being excreted in your urine. And so, listeners, if you're like, "What did she just say?" I want you to think <laughs> about. I want you to think about a piece of steak. You know how people cut into steak and some people like it bloody and some people like it not bloody at all. That's not blood. That's myoglobin. That is myoglobin that is being broken down because you are breaking down that piece of of flesh. The same thing can happen in your body because of statin medications biggest problem is CoQ10 deficiency also causes muscle weakness, muscle pain, muscle cramping. And we do not know and do not have it fully elucidated yet just how much of muscle weakness, muscle cramping, all of that is related to CoQ10 deficiency. Mm -hmm. And so we have to be able to put those two things together. We also know 
that cholesterol lowering medicines, um, they, they lower all, I mean, this stands to reason, listen to how reasonable this sounds. You're lowering the fat in your body by lowering cholesterol. Guess what? You're also eliminating and lowering most of your fat soluble vitamins. So mm -hmm. vitamin A, vitamin E, vitamin D, so important for us is all being lowered by the statin medications, diuretic drugs, just get rid of all of your minerals. Um, thiazide diuretic specifically also lower CoQ10. Um, another huge class of medicines are acid blocking medicines. Like please friends. Mm -hmm. I, I have a highlight on my Instagram reel of me walking through the pharmacy, just being like, this drug's all right. Ooh, look at that homeopathy. I've never seen that. Then there's the whole, like, please just don't even go down that aisle of medicines that I have. Um, and that is the acid lowering medicines, the proton pump inhibitors, the Prilosex of the world, the H2RAs, your histamine two receptor antagonists. Those are your Xantax and your Tagamets of the world. Tums, all of the direct calciums, the mylanta that we started our conversation with today, all of those acid lowering medicines are allowing more bad bacteria to get through your stomach down into your intestines, which is disrupting your microbiome. We also know that acid lowering medicines cause profound magnesium deficiencies mm -hmm. and these profound magnesium deficiencies can lead to anxiety, can lead to insomnia, can lead to muscle twitches and cramps. We also know that we're lowering both vitamin B12 and iron, both of which are um, known causes of anemia. And anemia, especially in women, can be an absolutely debilitating state to live in of feeling chronically just exhausted. Um, vitamin C, calcium, the list just goes on and on. You know, oral contraceptives, we see problems with nutrient depletions. We also see antidepressant medicines, lowering calcium and vitamin D levels, cholesterol, I'm sorry, excuse me, steroid medications also lower some really key micronutrients for the management of diabetes, things like chromium, um, and, and we also know steroids increase sodium. So now we're putting ourselves at risk for high blood pressure. The list simply goes on and on and on.